Hello, third graders. So today for our lesson, our math lesson on time, you might hear some background noise, you might hear some birds chirping and some dogs barking because I'm sitting outside because it's a nice day. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about elapsed time. Elapsed time is the amount of time that has passed between the start and end of an activity. So let's, let's do an example. Tom's soccer practice started at 3 o'clock, 3 p.m. It ended at 5 p.m. How long was his soccer practice? Now, th this is a concept that you're going to use all the time in real life. In fact, you probably already do. Um, you have different activities and things that start at certain times and end at certain times. Um, you watch movies that um, are a certain amount of time. Um, we go to school and we have lunch every day and recess at a certain time. So elapsed time is something that you will use all the time in real life. So it's an important skill to learn. So let's talk about how we can figure out how long Tom's soccer practice is. If it started at 3 o'clock and ended at 5 o'clock. Now... In this example, you're going to see that there's a number line drawn, and we're going to be using number lines to help us figure out elapsed time. So you can see his soccer practice started at 3 o'clock. So there's a number line here, with 3 o'clock being the first number on the number line. It ended at 5 o'clock, so 5 o'clock is the last number on the number line. And you can hop one in one hour increments until you get all the way to 5 to see how many hours it was. So from 3 o'clock, if I go 1 hour past 3 o'clock, I land on 4 o'clock. 1 hour past 4 o'clock would be 5 o'clock. So then I can go back and I can see that there are 2 hours between 3 o'clock and 5 o'clock. And they show you here on this clock, the hour hand was originally on the 3, okay, and it's now on the 5. And so this is the shaded area. It went from 3 to 4 and 4 to 5. It went 2 hours past. So the minute hand went all the way around the clock one full time and then two full times. And I'm going to show you what that looks like on this clock as well. So here's 3 o'clock. If I take my minute hand and I go around the clock one full time, I have gone one hour. Okay? If I take my minute hand and I go around the clock another full time, that is two hours. So I went from three o'clock to five o'clock. I went around the clock twice. I went two hours. So his soccer practice lasts two hours long. Now let's actually try some. So get out paper, pencil. Um, or dry erase board and a marker. We're going to do some number line problems together. Pause the video if you need time to get your materials out. Okay. Anita started her dinner at 6.45 p.m. She finished at 7.20 p.m. How long did her dinner last? So they have both times shown on an analog clock. They have 6.45 shown and they have 7.20. We have to figure out how long her dinner lasted. So, with me, I'd like you to draw a number line. Okay. And the first number on the number line is going to be the start time. She started at 6.45. <laughs> so go ahead and write that first. And then I'd like your end time, the last number on your number line, to be the end time, and that would be 7.20. We have to figure out how much time occurred between 6.45 and 7.20. So, if I jumped in hour increments, let's think about that. If I start at 6.45 and I go a whole hour past that time, I would land on 7.45 because I'm just adding one hour to that. So that's not going to work because I um, it did not take Anita a whole hour to finish her dinner. Um, she finished her dinner before 7.45. So I want you to think about it. Here's my clock. This is 6.45. I know that this hour hand is very close to the 7. Don't let it confuse you. 
in order for an hour to pass, this minute hand would have to go all the way around the clock one time. Okay, it has to go 60 minutes around the clock. So since it's starting on the 9 this time, it would have to come all the way back to the 9. That would be 7.45. So she did not spend a whole hour eating dinner. So we're going to go, we're going to move up in 10-minute increments to make this a little bit easier. Actually, you know what? No, we're going to do five minute increments. That's going to make this even easier. So, if I go from 645 and I go five more minutes, okay, that's one jump of five minutes. I would land on 650, okay, because that's five minutes. So go ahead and do that. Let's do the next one. If I go from 650 and I go five more minutes, I'm just going to put a five because I know I'm going by minutes. It would be 6.55, and you can easily see 5 minutes would be 6.55. I'm going to keep going in 5-minute increments until I get to 7.20. So now I'm going to go 5 more minutes, and I'm going to land on 7 o'clock. 5 more minutes, and I'm going to land on 7.05. 5 more minutes. 7.10. Five more minutes, 7.15. And now, I didn't quite judge how much space I would need, so obviously my 7.20 could be much closer to make a five-minute jump. So I'm actually just going to move it over here to 7.20. So five more minutes would be 7.20, and I can stop here because that's my end time. I'm done. So now I have to see how many minutes she actually spent eating dinner. And I do apologize. Somebody is blowing some leaves near our house. And it's a lot louder than I was expecting. So I'm going to speak up loudly. And I'm going to really hope that that doesn't distract you. So I apologize, boys and girls. So let's count all of our five minutes. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five. So, her dinner lasted 35 minutes. Okay? And I can see it on a clock as well. Here's 6.45. I'm going to keep going until I get to 7.20, and I'm going to see how long that is. 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15, 20, 25, 30 35. It's now 7.20, and I've gone 35 minutes around my clock. Okay, let's try another one. So, paper, pencil, or marker, um, and board, and let's look at this next one together. I'm going to ask you to try some of this without me, and we're going to see how well you do. A train leaves Cleveland at 7.30 a.m. It arrives in Cincinnati at 11.45 a.m. How long is the trip? So, number line. I like to make my number lines nice and long just so that I know for sure that I have enough space. My start time, the time that the train left is 7.30. So I'm going to write that down as my start time. Okay. It arrived in Cincinnati at 11.45, so I'm going to put that all the way at the end. I need to figure out how much time there is between 7.30 and 11.45. So... Let's think about this together. Do you think that we can hop in hour increments? Meaning, is there at least one hour between 7.30 and 11.45? Hopefully you said yes. There is more than one hour between 7.30 and 11.45. So I'm going to hop up in hour increments until I can no longer do that. Because I want to hop up on my number line in the largest increments that I can. Because if I tried to just do like five minute increments from 7.30 to 11.45, I would have so many five minute increments, it would take forever. So let's try. Let's start at 7.30. And if I jump one hour past 7.30, I want you to think about what time it would be one hour later and write that down. One hour later would be 8.30. Okay? The hour is the only part that changes. 
All right, I'm still not very close to 11.45, so I'm going to hop up another hour. One more hour past 8.30. I want you to think about what that would be. Okay, if you said 9.30, you are correct. 9.30. Now, I want you to see how many more times you can hop um, forward a full hour. See how many more hours you can hop forward before you have to stop. Pause the video and try it. Okay, hopefully you tried this. So, you could go from 9.30 to 10.30. That's an hour. And then you could go from 10.30 to 11.30. That's another hour. So you could have gone two more hours. I can't go forward any more full hours because if I go an hour past 11.30, I'm now at 12.30 and that's past 11.45. So now I have to hop up in much smaller increments. Now, I, you have lots of options. You can just do five-minute increments, which is what I'm going to do, because that's going to guarantee that you're not going to have any issues. But if you feel really confident that you could first jump up in, like, a ten-minute increment and then a five-minute increment, you can do that. It's all your comfort level. There's more than one way to do this. So I'm going to go from 11.30, and I'm going to hop five minutes, okay? And Five minutes past 11.30 would be 11.35. And then five more minutes would be 11.40. And then, again, I gave myself too much space, so I'm just going to move this down here. Five more minutes would be 11.45. And now I can stop because I've reached my end time. So now I need to add up all of these chunks of time to figure out how much time this whole trip took. So let's do it. We have one hour plus one hour plus one hour plus one hour. That's four hours. Okay. And then we have five, ten, fifteen minutes. So four hours and fifteen minutes is how long the trip took. I want to remind you that when you're using a number line to figure out elapsed time problems, there is more than one way to do this. So you don't have to, like, jump up in full hour increments. You could have done half hour increments. There's so many different ways to do this. Um, and you have to kind of decide which, like, which jumps make the most sense to your brain and which, what you're the best at counting by. So that's going to be a comfort level. So if you if you found a different way to do this, then that's okay. Like, let's say you got to 11.30, and you wanted to go from 11.30 to 11.40, and you knew that that was 10 minutes. You could have done that. You could have eliminated these two five-minute increments and made that 10 minutes, and then gone from 40 to 45 for five more minutes. That's okay. All right. This one is a little different. So in this one, we're going to have a start time. So the sh a chef starts work at 8.45. He usually works for 7 hours and 30 minutes. So this time they're going to tell us how long he's going to be there. And now they want us to find the end time. What time does he leave the restaurant? So same concept. We just have a little bit of a different way of figuring it out. Start time is 8.45. We don't know the end time. We don't know when he's going to leave. So, we are going to go from 8.45, and we're going to keep going um, 7 hours and 30 minutes later. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to assume, but I may be wrong, that he starts his work at 8.45 a.m., that it's in the morning seems kind of unlikely that he would start working so late at night. Because usually when people eat meals at restaurants, they go during the day. So he's going to start his work in the morning. Okay? Now, 7 hours and 30 minutes, we have to jump from 8.45 and do 7 hours and 30 minutes after that. So let's jump in 1 hour increments. So we're going to go from 8.45 and then we're going to go 1 hour. 
and that would be 9.45. Now we're going to jump another hour to get to 10.45. And I'm going to keep doing that until I've gone seven hours. But here's where it gets tricky. Okay, after I have jumped up one, two, three, four hours, I'm at 12.45. I still have to I still have three more hours to jump. But think about what one hour after 12.45 is. It's not 13.45. There is no 13 on the clock. So one hour after 12.45 is 1.45. That's the hour that comes after 12.45. I've gone one, two, three, four, five. I need to jump two more hours. One, two. Okay, so now 2.45 and now 3.45. Okay, now, I now have to remember that he didn't just work for seven hours. He worked for seven hours and 30 minutes. So I have to add another 30 minutes on to that. So, um... I actually should have made this a little bit longer this time so that I had more space, so I'm going to extend my number line. And there are several ways I can do this. I'm going to say that I know that if I jump up first by 15 minutes and then by 15 minutes again, I will have finally reached 30 minutes because I know that 15 plus 15 is 30. So I'm going to start at 345 and I'm going to go 15 minutes past 345. And I want to give you a visual for those of you who need it. This is what 345 looks like on the clock. Okay? 5, 10, 15, 15 minutes and put me at 4 o'clock. So I'm going to jump up 15 minutes and that puts me at 4 o'clock. I have to go 15 more minutes, 5, 10, 15, and that puts me at 4, 15. So now, I know, I have to double check though, that I have gone 7 hours and 30 minutes. Let's make sure. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 hours. 15 minutes and 15 minutes make 30 minutes. So I've now gone 7 hours and 30 minutes. So the chef leaves the restaurant at 4.15. And it's actually probably going to be 4.15 p.m. Because if you started in the a.m., once you hit past 12 o'clock, it turns to p.m. That's just a little side note for you. So I'm going to say he leaves the restaurant at 4.15. That one was a challenge. Okay. Now, I'm going to give you one, and I'm going to ask you to pause the video. I want you to try to solve it, and then I want you to check your work with mine. I'm going to get you started by drawing the number line. Devin started reading a book at 2.35 p.m., so that's going to be your first number. She took three hours and ten minutes to finish the book. What time did she finish reading the book? We don't know what time she finished reading. We have to figure that out. So we have to jump forward three hours and ten minutes past 2.35. Go ahead and try it. Pause the video, please. And then we will review our work together. If you did not pause first to solve the problem, please do that now because I am about to review the answer with you. Okay. So we started at 2.35. We're going to go three hours first. So one hour, two hour, three hours. 2.35. One hour later is 3.35. One hour later is 4.35. And then the third hour is 5.35. Now, I just have to go 10 more minutes past 5.35. So now I'm looking at my minutes. 
So I'm at 35 minutes. And if I add 10 minutes to 35 minutes, I then get to 45 minutes. And you can easily see that on a clock as well. So here's 535. Okay, that hour hand is a little bit past the five. It's getting closer to six o'clock, but it's not there yet. Okay, it's on, um, it's on the seven, which shows 35 minutes past five. I'm going to go 10 more minutes. Five, 10. And I'm now going to be at 545. So, she finished reading her book at 545. Now we're going to do one more. I'd like you to do this completely on your own. Pause the video, try really hard to solve it, and then I will share the answer. Okay, if you did not pause the video first to solve it, please do that now so that then you can check your work when you're done. Alright, so start time was 11.50 a.m. That's when he got to his friend's house. He left his friend's house at 3.15 p.m. So I need to fig needed to figure out how much time was there, there was between 11.50 and 3.15. So first, I started out by jumping forward by hours. So I went from 11.50 to 12.50, from 12.50 to 1.50, and from 1.50 to 2.50. That was three full hours. If I tried going another hour, I would have gotten to 350, which is past 315. So I now know I have to jump up in smaller increments. So I'm at 250. I'm going to go 10 minutes past 250, and I'm going to get to 3 o'clock. 250 to 3 o'clock is 10 minutes. Okay. Then I now know that I need to go from 3 o'clock to 3.15. And I know that from 3 o'clock to 3.15, sorry about that, I messed this up, is 15 minutes. So now I have to add up all of these hours and minutes to figure out all together how long Marcus was there. One, two, three hours. 10 minutes plus 15 minutes. Now, if you can't do 10 plus 15 really quickly in your head, which you should be able to do, but if you can't, you could always quickly go over here like this if you really needed to. No worries there, right? So 10 minutes plus 15 minutes is 25 minutes. So three hours and 25 minutes is how long, sorry, that was messy, sort of is how long his visit was. All right. So, um, number lines are your best friend when it comes to solving elapsed time problems. The more you do these, the more comfortable you get, you'll get, and the easier it will be to start doing them in your head at some point. But these number lines are going to be really helpful to you as you get started trying to solve some of them. So use those today on the problems that I give you on your Google form. Good luck. Bye, boys and girls.